All right, what's going on? So I want to show you something really interesting here. I know a lot of you are developers and a lot of you are out there trying to mint NFTs and do all of this Web3 stuff going around right now. Now you might be trying to get in on the latest, hottest NFT drop and you try to send a transaction, it doesn't go through and you're like, what do I do now? You might see a thing that looks like this, right? Um, oh, let's actually simulate right now. So let's say I'm sending my transaction um, and Let's uh, send it to myself and it's going to be zero ETH, but pretend I'm sending like a lot of ETH or whatever. And I will um, purposefully edit right here to make sure my gas fee is like really low, a little bit too low for the network. Uh, but I still try to send this transaction. Now what's going to happen is you see this pending transaction and it's been staying there for seconds now, for minutes, for hours. And you're like, whoa, that's a little bit weird. What's going to happen with this transaction? What should I do with it? Now, have no fear. That's why I'm here. I'm going to show you how to debug this. Okay. We've written this great article on the Alchemy team and we've submitted it to the Web3 University website. I'll drop a link in the description below so you can look through it. But basically there are two very common reasons why transactions might be going wrong. The most common of which is that your gas price might be too low. And that's exactly what's been uh, happening with our transaction right here in our example. Um, and the cool thing about Alchemy is if you are using the Alchemy RPC, you can see a lot of really interesting information about your transaction. For example, and I am using my Alchemy RPC right now. Uh, let's refresh this. Mempool Watcher, what this does is it shows you in the nodes mempool, all the transactions that are either already successfully mined, like this one, or all the transactions that are pending, like this tab, or all the transactions that are dropped. And uh, this is really helpful because you can see all this information, like for example, I click in this transaction has, this was broadcast at 1131, and this is a transaction ID. This is the network that we are trying to publish on. It's block zero, block number zero, because we haven't actually included it in a block yet. And then we have like, you know, the gas value, the nonce of the transaction, yada, 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 all this really useful information. And you see it's been pending for over a minute now. Okay. Maybe that's not too bad, but let's say it goes up to 10 minutes, 20 minutes. What do I do? Right? So in this scenario where the gas fee, the gas price is too low, and how do I know this? Well, we can actually check. Right now, the gas that I've submitted the transaction with is 0.01 GUE, right? Now, if we go to Rink B Etherscan, for example, they'll show you, um, oh, actually, I guess they don't show you average, um, you know, price, gas price on Rink B, but, you know, on normal uh, Etherscan, they actually show you the median gas price, and then there's like um, gas station ETH, and this will actually show you gas estimates too. So anyways, there are a bunch of different ways to check the average gas price, but I do know that the gas price for this is a little bit too low. So what I can do is go into MetaMask and the nice thing about MetaMask is they give you these UI options to either speed up or cancel your transaction. And what they're really doing is they'll submit these two buttons, clicking either of them, will submit another transaction with the exact same nonce as this one, which is 192 and uh, it will submit a higher gas fee, a higher transaction fee to incentivize the miners to include that transaction first. So let's just try it out. We'll click on cancel and you can see here, uh, it doesn't show you the nonce. So let, let, me, let me do it the hard way. So we'll send another transaction to myself, same zero ETH, I'm not actually gonna send any money. But what I'm gonna do is instead of using the default custom nonce of the next transaction, which is what MetaMask thinks I wanna do, I'm actually gonna send the same nonce, so 192, uh, but I'm gonna use high gas fee to make sure that like, hey, we're gonna pay a lot to incentivize miners to include this. And then if you hit, hit confirm, you see right now it's pending, but we'll go back to our mempool watcher and then we'll click all. And you can see immediately that transaction was mined. Same nonce, 192, 192, but because I had more gas you know, and everything worked out, this transaction was included first, this canceled transaction. And as a result, what happens is when you include that canceled transaction first, only one transaction of each nonce can be included in the blockchain. Only one transaction of each nonce can be included in the blockchain. So that means eventually this one will be dropped because uh, you know the node realizes, hey, you know, no one's ever actually going to mine this 192 nonce transaction because th there was another one that was already in. So this one is basically fake, it's done for. So we'll drop it. So that's how you resolve it. Now you can, uh, like what I did, cancel it. Or if you wanna retry it, MetaMask does have that UI. And so that's kind of how it works in the MetaMask browser extension experience. So if you're doing everything manually.
Let's go over to the terminal so that I can show you how you do that in code as well. So we're in the code right here. And what I want to show you is a script that is a very basic um, JavaScript script to send a transaction from my wallet to my good friend Elon's wallet. And this might be common logic because you know, you're building a wallet or you're building a marketplace, whatever it is, you're helping your, your uh, user you know, send transactions or your smart contract is sending transactions. So uh, let's walk through the code real quick and then I'll show you an example of a pending transaction and how we can fix that in the code. Okay, so we're using the ethers JS library. So I'm requiring that here. I'm also loading a bunch of secrets from my end file. So I'm using the dot env library. And this is where the script actually happens. Okay, the first thing I do is I build a connection to the alchemy RPC node. And the way I do that is ethers.provider.json RPC provider. And then I'm putting in the API URL. And the API URL that I have defined in my end file is basically pulled from my dashboard. I hit view key and I copy this uh, HTTP URL. And that's my Alchemy API URL. So I'm including that here and that gets my connection to Alchemy. And what do I wanna do with this connection to Alchemy? A couple of things. Number one, I wanna get the gas price because this is what I'm gonna be using to send my transaction. Like what's an appropriate gas price for the, for the network right now? And then I have a sanity check where uh, once I run the script, you'll see this. I will log the gas price in ether terms. So I do this formatting of the gas price uh, into ether and then just add an ETH at the end for readability. And then the other thing I wanna do with Alchemy is I actually wanna create a connection to my wallet. So the other secret that I have in my .m file is a private key to my wallet. Uh, and also here's uh, the Alchemy connection once again. Then I call a new ethers.wallet with that information to create Albert's wallet. And then where I wanna send my ether is my good friend Alon's wallet. So this is her address right here. And then I'm constructing the transaction object. So of course, in the transaction object, I have from address, which is you know where I'm sending the money from, the to address, which is Alon's address, the value field, which is how much ether I wanna send. So we're using this utils uh, function, ethers.utils.parseInts, and then we're sending 0.001 ETH. And then we have gas price, which is how much gas we're willing to pay. And we had calculated how much gas is fair earlier right here on line seven. So we're just putting that in. And then the gas limit is how much we want to cut the gas off at. So like this is the maximum gas I'm willing to pay. 100 guay is like amazing. It's like super high for, especially for Rinkby testnet. So for sure that'll be fine. And then the nonce, we're again asking our alchemy node, hey, can you check my address, my Albert dot address, Albert wallet address at the latest block and check what is the transaction count because that's what nonces are, right? They're the count of how many transactions I've completed. And then that's what I'm gonna use for my next nonce. So this transaction, if I submit it, will go through. So let's, let's run it. Um, I'm just gonna do node send transaction.js. Um, can't find, so let's just auto complete that. I, I think I mistyped earlier. So it's running. And then we'll scroll back up to read it. So you can see here the gas price that it had estimated is really, really small, right? Like there's like on Rinkby testnet, it doesn't really cost that much gas, especially to just like send some ether. And then here's the transaction that ran. And uh, you can see we're not really, it, we're not sure like if it, if it ran or not yet, right? So let's go back to the mempool uh, explorer in Alchemy and then refresh that. And you can see, boom, another transaction was mined, NON's 193. It only costs one GUI for gas, and here's the block number, blah, blah, blah. Here's the value that I had sent to Elon, right? Uh, turns out it was me the whole time. Uh, but anyways, so let's go back here and let me show you what a pending transaction looks like and so that you might see it in your code too, okay? So we're gonna go back here to the gas price and I'm gonna comment out the correct gas price and comment back in this lower gas price. That's gonna be way too low. I've basically taken the appropriate gas price. I've divided it by 10 to make it really small. And, and then, you know, it, it's just too small. So this will not go through and it will stay pending for, for a long time because it's just too little gas. So let's clear this out. And then I'm gonna run the script again and ignore this. This is my uh, repo folder name. I called it delete so I can remember to delete it later. Uh, but we're gonna run the script and then you can see same around the same gas estimate. Um, and then we have the transaction coming through and the nonce is 194 this time. You can see that in the, in the script uh, console log output. Now if we go back to our mempool watcher and refresh that, boom, we now have a pending transaction with nonce 194, right?
And sure, it's only been 13 seconds, you know, blocks might take a little bit longer or whatever. So, you know, let's pretend this is a real life scenario. We're like waiting a little bit and refreshing and okay, it's not going through, it's taking forever, right? So we notice when we click into the hash, let's do our debugging process, right? The gas we're doing is uh, 0.1 GUI, which is, it's too small, it's too small. Normally, let's, let's look at the previous transaction that we had done. The gas we paid was one GUI, right? And here we are trying to submit a transaction with 0.1 GUI, a tenth of what you know was supposed to get us in. So that's our hypothesis. Hey, you know this is like uh, too low of gas. So let's go back to the code, comment this out, the bad gas value, comment back in the good va gas value. And the thing we want to do now to fix this, just like we did in MetaMask, is we want to replace the nonce. So we no longer want to rely on Alchemy to tell us what's the current transaction count. So we're gonna comment this out, and then we're going to uh, bring our nonce back in, and we want to use the exact same nonce as the pending transaction so that we can replace it with a new transaction with the right gas. So let's copy this 194, and we'll paste that in. And then we're gonna resubmit this transaction, and you'll see that come through right here, and that new transaction will get mined, and then this old one will eventually get dropped. So. Let's clear this once again, just for good hygiene. And then we will send that transaction. Um, and then that looks like that sent. And you see, once again, the nonce is 194, just like this previous one, right? So we will refresh this and you'll see another row. Boom, 194 immediately mined because the gas was good. Everything else was good. And this one's still pending for a little bit, but it will eventually be dropped. So there you go, the exact same scenario, but in your code, in your scripts, that you can watch out for because with the low gas fees um, as MetaMask. And so that's how you debug it using the Alchemy Mempool Watcher. Now I'm gonna add a little bonus here. Sometimes, you know, you might uh, have some logic in your script that does this like error checking, this nonce modification. Now check this out. If I go back, you know, I have, I have a bunch of transactions here, right? Nonce 194, 193, 192, yada, yada, yada. Now, if I'm going to send another transaction with nonce 190 just on accident, I don't know why, but my script has bad logic and I'm sending 190 again. This transaction will fail. And it's not gonna show up in the mempool watcher because the transaction will just not get to the mempool. But the Alchemy node will know like, hey, you're, you're, send, you're asking me to do something that is illegal. Where does that show up? So let's clear this. Clear. I've modified this to be 190. So we can run node send transaction.js. Okay. And if we see here, there's actually an error returned in, in the console from, from ethers.js that bubbles up from, from Alchemy. And you can see here the code is nonce has already been used. That, that's the reason. And the code is nonce expired. And if we go up here, I actually wonder if it even will show up. Let's go back to our GM app into the Explorer. And you can see, yep, it does show. It, our Alchemy node for the Rinkby test network, GM, this app, had received a transaction request, in particular, a ETH send raw transaction call. And as a response, it said, hey, your nonce is a little bit too low. Uh, what are you doing here, right? We're not gonna let this transaction go through. And so if we reload the uh, mempool, you'll also see there's no transaction that actually came through. The last one was the successful um, 194 nonce transaction that went through, but there's no other transactions that came through because, you know, by the time it, we got the request, we realized already, like, hey, we're not gonna even try this, right? Like the nonce is too, too low. So that's, that's uh, yeah, that's how you debug pending transactions using Alchemy Mempool, using a little bit of the Explorer. And we looked at MetaMask, we looked at Ethers.js, and I hope that was helpful. I hope you are now one step closer to being a Web3 developer god and uh, I'll see you next time. Hope that was useful. Comment, leave a comment below if there's something else you wanna see that you're not understanding about the Alchemy ecosystem or if, uh, if I helped you with pending transactions, let me know. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time, bye.